Welcome to Sports Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. LeBron will get more help this season from Lakers revamped roster, GM Palinka says. Letters, voters see through Labor's spin on its punitive plan for private schools. Prescott, Elliott getting used to being former teammates with Cowboys, Patriots set to meet. Seattle's Julio Rodriguez says Houston's Hector Neris crossed line with his antics. New Zealand has plenty of Cricket World Cup motivation based on controversial defeat in 2019 final. LeBron will get more help this season from Lakers' revamped roster, GM Palinka says. The Toronto Star. Los Angeles Lakers general manager Rob Palinka believes that the team's offseason roster moves will allow LeBron James to rest more this season. The Lakers have focused on adding depth, versatility, and shooting to the roster to support James in his 21st NBA season and help him manage his minutes. The team is hoping that the additions will give them a strong roster capable of contending for a championship. James will also benefit from the league's new player participation policy, which allows for rest exemptions for highly experienced veterans. Letters, voters see through Labor's spin on its punitive plan for private schools. Telegraph. Keir Starmer's proposal to impose VAT on private school fees has been met with criticism from readers of The Telegraph. Critics argue that private schools would pass the cost of VAT on to parents, resulting in increased fees and potentially forcing some parents to remove their children from private education. The removal of charitable status for private schools has also been criticized, as many schools use their charitable status to contribute to their local community by providing facilities and funding bursaries for disadvantaged students. Some readers argue that Labor's plans are a cynical attempt to appeal to voters without considering the consequences for poorer students and families. Others suggest that an exemption for the military should be considered, as the tax on fees could make private education unaffordable for service families. Prescott, Elliott getting used to being former teammates with Cowboys, Patriots set to meet. The Toronto Star. The New England Patriots travel to face the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday, with Bill Belichick in search of his 300th career win as a head coach. The game will see Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott face each other as opponents for the first time since being teammates at the Cowboys. The Patriots start as underdogs and will need to deal with an extremely hostile crowd. Seattle's Julio Rodriguez says Houston's Hector Neris crossed line with his antics. The Toronto Star. Houston Astros pitcher Hector Neris has been accused of crossing a line and using a homophobic slur during an altercation with Seattle Mariners player Julio Rodriguez. The incident occurred during a game on Wednesday in which the Astros won 8-3. Neris has denied the claim and issued a written apology. Rodriguez declined to comment on whether he heard Neris use a slur. The incident has been referred to Major League Baseball for investigation. New Zealand has plenty of Cricket World Cup motivation based on controversial defeat in 2019 final. Associated Press. New Zealand's cricket team, which lost the last World Cup on a boundary count back to England, is preparing for another shot at the title in the upcoming T20 World Cup in India. The team's captain, Kane Williamson, is currently recovering from a knee injury and may not play in the first match against England on October 5. However, his presence in the squad is seen as a boost due to his leadership abilities and calm character. New Zealand's form leading up to the tournament has been mixed, and the team will face challenging conditions in India. With Jimmy Garoppolo in concussion protocol, Raiders starting QB versus Chargers is unknown. The Toronto Star. Las Vegas Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo has been preparing to play the Los Angeles Chargers on Sunday, but he is currently in the concussion protocol. The Raiders' medical staff will make the final decision on whether Garoppolo can play, and that decision may not come until shortly before game time. If Garoppolo cannot play, the Raiders may start either Brian Hoyer or rookie Aiden O'Connell. Experience will not be the deciding factor in the decision, according to Raiders coach Josh McDaniels. The Chargers' passing game is thriving under Justin Herbert, who leads the league with a 74.4% completion rate and a 112.9 passer rating. Why India's Fast Bowling Stars Could Win the World Cup BBC India's cricket team for the 2023 World Cup is likely to be dominated by pace bowlers, with no specialist spinners in the top half of the team. In the past, India's success has come from a mix of bowlers who could bat as well, but the focus has shifted to wicket-taking rather than defensive bowling. The current lineup of pace bowlers, including Jasprit Bumrah, Mohamed Siraj, and Mohamed Shami, suggests that India's strength lies in pace. However, India also has a strong spin combination with the likes of Kuldeep Yadav and Ravindra Jadeja. Regardless of the sport, it's totally familiar for the Netherlands at the Cricket World Cup. Associated Press. The Netherlands cricket team, known for its underdog status, is preparing for the World Cup in India. 
The team, coached by Ryan Cook, is described as playing total cricket, a term first coined for the Dutch soccer team in the 1970s. The team has qualified for the tournament as the only second-tier associate cricket nation. The Netherlands has shown its strength and depth, with players of Dutch and overseas backgrounds contributing to their success in qualifying. The team is aiming to win as many games as possible and compete for a spot in the semi-finals. Timberwolves ready to run back the Gobert Towns pairing after false start last season. The Toronto Star. The Minnesota Timberwolves are looking to make another attempt at pairing big men Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert together after the experiment was cut short last season due to an injury to Towns. Gobert struggled to integrate into the team last year, but the Timberwolves are hoping that a second year together will see an improvement. The team is also hoping to refine the connection between the two players and guard Anthony Edwards during preseason training. Brazil's Flamengo fires Argentinian coach Sam Paoli with tight in sight. Associated Press. Brazilian soccer club Flamengo has fired coach Jorge Sampaoli less than a week after he missed his last opportunity to win a title with the club. Sampaoli, a former coach of Argentina, Sevilla, and Marseille, joined Flamengo in April and had a contract until the end of 2024. Flamengo is currently in seventh place in the Brazilian championship and local media has reported that the club's preferred replacement for Sampaoli is former Brazil coach Tight. However, Tite has previously stated that he would not coach any Brazilian team in 2023 and is looking for opportunities to work abroad. Broncos electrifying rookie receiver returner Marvin Mims Jr. isn't sweating his paucity of snaps. The Toronto Star. Denver Broncos rookie Marvin Mims Jr. has been making big plays consistently in his first few games in the NFL. He has already recorded a 45-yard punt return, a 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, and a 60-yard touchdown catch. Mims has totaled 429 all-purpose yards on just 15 touches. Despite his impressive performances, Mims' offensive snaps have decreased each week. However, Mims is not concerned about his playing time and is ready to deliver whenever he gets the ball. Packers place offensive tackle Bakhtiari on injured reserve as he continues to deal with knee issue. The Toronto Star. Green Bay Packers left tackle David Bakhtiari has been placed on injured reserve due to a knee injury that has required three surgeries and limited him for the past three years. Bakhtiari, one of the NFL's top pass blockers, will now miss at least the next four games. The Packers also announced that wide receiver Christian Watson will make his season debut and running back Aaron Jones will return from a two-game absence due to hamstring injuries. The Detroit Lions will have running back David Montgomery and offensive tackle Taylor Decker available after each missed a game, but cornerback Jer Alexander will miss his second straight game with a back injury. The Seahawks will try to remain perfect at MetLife Stadium when they face the Giants on Monday night. The Toronto Star. The New York Giants are facing the Seattle Seahawks on Monday night, a day of the week the Seahawks have never lost a game on. The Seahawks are also 5-0 at MetLife Stadium, including their Super Bowl win in 2014. The Giants are currently 1-2 and need a win to avoid falling to 1-3. Giants running back Saquon Barkley is uncertain to play due to a sprained ankle, so the Giants may rely more on their passing game against the Seahawks' weak pass defense. Garrett Mitchell returns to Milwaukee lineup as the Brewers beat the St. Louis Cardinals 3-0. The Toronto Star Garrett Mitchell made an impact in his first game back since April, helping the Milwaukee Brewers defeat the St. Louis Cardinals 3-0. Mitchell, who had been out with a shoulder injury, doubled, walked twice, and scored a run. The Brewers' pitching staff combined for a six-hit shutout, with Corbin Burns, Julio Tejeron, and Ethan Small all contributing. The win secured the Brewers' NL Central Division title. He's an awesome dude, how star Panther and Bronco struck up an unlikely friendship. The Sydney Morning Herald. Nathan Cleary and Pat Carrigan, who became friends while backpacking through Europe after Australia's World Cup victory last year, will face off against each other in the NRL Grand Final. Cleary plays for the Penrith Panthers while Carrigan plays for the Brisbane Broncos. Despite their friendship, both players are focused on winning the match and will put their friendship on hold for the 80 minutes of the game. They both acknowledge the success of their respective teams but are focused on their own journey and creating their own memories in the Grand Final. In today's news, we have a mix of sports and politics, with some intriguing matchups and controversial decisions. Let's dive in, shall we? First up, we have some exciting news for Lakers fans. General Manager Rob Palinka believes that the team's offseason roster moves will give LeBron James more support and allow him to rest more this season. It's no secret that LeBron has been carrying a heavy load throughout his career, so any help he can get is a welcome addition. 
With the Lakers focusing on adding depth, versatility, and shooting, they are hoping to contend for a championship this season. And with the league's new player participation policy allowing rest exemptions for veterans, LeBron will have even more opportunities to take a breather. So, Lakers fans, get ready for a refreshed and recharged King James. Next, we have the controversial proposal by Keir Starmer to impose VAT on private school fees. Critics argue that this move would result in increased fees for parents and potentially force some to remove their children from private education altogether. The removal of charitable status for private schools has also faced criticism, as many schools use their charitable status to contribute to their local communities and provide opportunities for disadvantaged students. While some see this as a cynical attempt by labor to appeal to voters, others suggest that exemptions should be considered, such as for military families. It's a complex issue, and the consequences for poorer students and families need to be carefully considered. Moving on to sports, we have a matchup between the New England Patriots and the Dallas Cowboys. Bill Belichick is in search of his 300th career win as a head coach, and the game will see Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott face each other as opponents for the first time since being teammates at the Cowboys. The Patriots may start as underdogs, but with an experienced coach like Belichick, anything is possible. And let's not forget the extremely hostile crowd that the Patriots will have to deal with. It's going to be an exciting game. In baseball news, we have an accusation of a homophobic slur being used during a game between the Houston Astros and the Seattle Mariners. Houston Astros pitcher Hector Neris has been accused of crossing a line, but he has denied the claim and issued an apology. The incident has been referred to Major League Baseball for investigation. It's a reminder that sportsmanship and respect should always be a priority, and any form of discrimination or derogatory language has no place in the game. Shifting gears to cricket, we have New Zealand's cricket team preparing for another shot at the title in the upcoming T20 World Cup in India. Despite the controversial defeat in the 2019 World Cup final, the team is motivated to prove themselves once again. Captain Kane Williamson's presence in the squad is seen as a boost, even though he may not play in the first match due to a knee injury. New Zealand's form leading up to the tournament has been mixed, but they will face challenging conditions in India. It's going to be an exciting tournament, and we'll see if New Zealand can turn their motivation into success on the field. And finally, we have some intriguing matchups in American football. Las Vegas Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo is in the concussion protocol, leaving his starting position uncertain for the game against the Los Angeles Chargers. The Raiders may start either Brian Hoyer or rookie Aiden O'Connell, and experience will not be the deciding factor in the decision. Meanwhile, the Packers have placed offensive tackle David Bakhtiari on injured reserve due to a knee injury. His absence will be felt, but the team will have wide receiver Christian Watson and running back Aaron Jones back in action. It's always a game of uncertainties in football, and we'll see how these teams adapt to the challenges. That's it for today's news. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you agree with the Lakers roster moves? What do you think about the VAT proposal for private schools? And who do you think will come out on top in the upcoming cricket and football games? Share your thoughts, and let's continue the discussion. As always, stay tuned to Six Degrees for more updates and insights from around the world. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of Six Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the Six Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website. 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.